the round three. So match point for Thankful. So Park Map is fighting to stay alive. I'll be following a bit. I'm just getting into Total War Warhammer 2 multiplayer again with the close to 0% win rate. <laughs> hey man, today I have a 0% win rate. Eric Krastic, uh beat me out of the Faction War tournament. He's such a good player, man. Nothing but respect for him. And no can do it. It's a, it's a steep learning curve, but I promise you once you get the hang of it, it is so rewarding. This game is just beautiful. You won't find another game with as much depth of strategy as this one, in my humble opinion. There's just so much to take into account and so much... So many variables um, that come into play in this game, and it's just uncontested as far as I'm concerned when it comes to strategy content. This game is just head and shoulders above so many others. But yeah, it's definitely hard. I would never lie about that. <laughs> but without further ado, here we are, round three. Park Map and his Vampire Coast taking on Thankle and his Lizardmen. And uh, they should be loaded into the battle quickly here. Um, they have been taking a little bit of time to load in, but while they are doing just that, we can take a look at the map here, the Ashen Hall. I haven't used this map in tournaments in a while. It's an interesting one. A lot of terrain features to work with, a lot of impassable terrain that can lead to some interesting choke point battles. And uh, just also like when it comes to the deployment in this battle, I find it super interesting to see which approach the players take. Okay, well, let's start with the Vampire Coast first, shall we? For the Vampire Coast, we have a front line of infantry that's going to consist of... Oh, where the hell did you go? There you are. So we got three or four units of um, zombies, one of them being the Tide of Skilled. We have four units of zombie pirate deckhand mob with pole arms. Got two depth guard, very good infantry here. Got three zombie pirate gunnery mob with handguns, um, including the ROR Black Spot. Ugh, just had to take a quick look at these Depth Guard because they're so beautiful. Um, for some of the heroes shit, um, leadership here, we have a Gunnery White on foot. Going to be having a lot of his abilities here. Cackle Fruit, Enchanted Ballistics, More Powder, and Dead Eyes. And then over here on the left flank, we're going to see a second Gunnery White, guys. Same loadout on top of him too. And we also have Queen Bess. The Mortar to end all mortars with the Terrorgeist strapped to the front of it. And oh my goodness gracious, what a beautiful unit. But last and certainly not least, we have a Vampire Fleet Admiral of Polearm. And he's going to have the lore of vampires. So Invocation to Heck by the looks of it. As, wait, where are you? There you are. Invocation to Heck, Drown Dead, Wand of Jet. And then I want to see what these other abilities are. I know this is all hands hui. And Van Hortzman Speculum, a very big debuff for 16 seconds in area of effect. So, interesting Vampire Coast army, and I'm excited to see how Queen Bessie does here. She is just one of my favorite units in the damn game. She's just so funny. Anyways, over here to the Lizardman, our red player. We're going to have a front line consisting of good old Skink Cohort, very cheap line infantry. Going to have them backed up by four units of Red Crested Skink, so not going with the Soros Warriors in this matchup, going for the faster, cheaper Skink build. He's going to have some Skink Skirmishers vanguarded up here on the right of the battlefield, and a second unit of Skink Skirmishers deployed even further to the eastern side of the battlefield. Now, for the left flank, we are going to have... Oh my goodness gracious, I love fresh recruit tournaments, just because it's so nice to see off-meta builds. Look at this, guys. Two Feral Cold Ones. Backed up by three Salamander Hunting Pack. Salamander Hunting Pack, we have seen them be very useful in some of the tournament battles already, including when Thankul was taking on the Norskins. Um, so yeah, we'll see how these three fire-breathing Salamanders do. Now on to the heroes and single entity monsters. We got a Skink Priest of Beast on foot up front, Transformation of Kadan and Wildheart, nothing else. And then we're going to be looking at a Feral Carnosaur Supporting a Saurus Old Blood. Saurus Old Blood will have the Horn of Kygor and Amulet of Itzel. So, time to see which of these two players comes out on top. Queen Bessie, not going to have the best of targets, but she should be able to get quite a lot of damage done against these Skink Cohort. And, oh, that killed quite a lot of them. 19 kills off of that one shot, about a quarter damage. But I am worried about the Vampire Coast. 
when the Salamander hunting pack close the distance. I mean, it's really going to be about the handgunners and whether they can counter that or not. Um, but I do like Queen Bessie here on this map. A lot of terrain features that she can just fire over as the Lizardmen rush to close the gap. Oh, another nice hit on top of these red crested skinks. Oh, Queen Bess, I love you. One thing I would definitely say in this army is I would ditch all the other items from the Gunnery White. Just keep him naked. He has the extra powder um, by default. And I think that just would have worked out a lot better um, so you can get more chaff. But man, Queen Bessie, half health, one shot on top of that skink cohort. And uh, she's just doing she's doing wonderful for the Vampire Co. so far. Going to see a zombie pirate gunnery mob with handguns turn to face these skink skirmishers. Opening fire and they should be able to out skirmish them pretty convincingly once they start opening fire. They outrange them. They have better damage on top of their missiles, but time will tell. Gonna see another volley from the Queen Bessie going directly into that Red Crest King. And I have to say, Queen Bess getting some crazy good value so far. I think every hit has been connected. 81 kills on her already. Um, and that's really gonna help the zombie chaff in the front line hold against uh, these Lizardmen uh, Skink infantry. But here comes the fire flying in trying to hit the depth guard the depth guard probably not the best target since they are rather heavily armored and over here feral cold one riders getting on top of some zombie pirate handguns but the deckhand mob with pole arms are coming in to counter them and they should be able to wrap them up nice and quickly but right now it just doesn't seem like the salamander hunting pack have gotten into their rhythm as of yet they're not really uh, hitting any of the key units they need to be hitting, and a lot of friendly fire is going down on top of the Red Crested Skinks and Skink Cohort. Oh my god! That Queen Bessie just doing so, so well. But now we have Carnosaurs in the back lines, ladies and gentlemen. The Vampire Fleet Captain is doing his best to duke it out with him. He is on foot, though, so he's just going to get knocked around a lot. The Gunnery Whites are firing in, doing some really good damage as well. And the Queen Best the whole while, look at that, shattered units here. Um, Depth Guard going to keep on chasing down these Lizardman infantry units, and the Depth Guard are doing really, really well so far. Park Map is uh, really flexing his Vampire Coast muscles at the time. And oh boy, <laughs> Queen Bessie works against the Salamander hunting pack too, guys. And now the Depth Guard are getting down on top of them, and uh, Depth Guard are probably going to do just fine in that combat, to be honest. Oh, yeah, there they go. They're starting to waver and route, and here comes another shot. Oh, Queen Bessie, another good hit. And look at this, chat. The Feral Carnosaurs in the back line, the Saurus Old Blood and the Feral Carnosaur are just having a really hard time by the looks of it. Queen Bess going to do a nice gentle lob. Oh, but a lot of friendly fire damage on top of the black spot. That was unfortunate indeed. Uh, but now, looking at the Saurus Old Blood, he's getting shot by Zombie Pirate Gunnery Mob. He's getting attacked by the Vampire Fleet Captain. He's getting shot by the Gunnery Whites. And the Vampire Coast is just looking really strong so far. Yeah, Balance of Power is getting out of hand for the Lizards here. And Queen Bess, how many kills you got now? 189. Holy hell, Queen Bess. Pretty much all of the Lizardman infantry has been dealt with. Which is just insanity to me at this point. How much value Queen Bess has been able to get in this fight. There goes the Saurus Old Blood, though. He's starting to rout the Gunnery Whites. If they keep on targeting him, they may be able to kill him. Yeah, 769 in HP. But it looks like they're going to turn their attention to the Feral Carnosaur now. I, I have to say I agree with that decision. Um, is at this stage of the battle, it's just like not looking like the Lizardmen have much to threaten the Vampire Coast with anymore. Queen Bess is the best. <laughs> oh my god. Maybe the accuracy bo um, bonus from the Gunnery Whites is actually helping the Queen Bess be so effective. I'm not sure. So maybe one of those items you want to keep on the Gunnery White because I have never seen the Queen Bess just shoot this accurately so consistently. I mean, I say as he misses that one completely. But here it goes. Feral Carnosaur getting shot down. There's a summon of Zombie Pirate Gunnery Mob. As Romulan once told, taught me, pretty much the best summon in the game is the gunnery mob for the Vampire Coast. In goes all that damage. Carnosaur Lord. Oh, a huge hit on top of the Ancient Salamanders. 
And now Soros Old Blood. Gonna be really low on health, down to 239. Feral Carnosaur's routing. Soros Old Blood's routing. Queen Bessie is still just firing away very high on ammunition. More powder, continuing to give it more ammunition. And Queen Bessie just destroying the Silent Winter hunting pack now. A beautiful, beautiful game to park map here. I have to say it was a very convincing victory. And, uh, you know, not uh, speaking ill at all of Thonquil. I think he's been playing these battles very well. But this is the first one, clearly, where park map is just in his element. And he's kind of commanded the pace of this battle from start to finish as far as I'm concerned. So really well played to him. And, you know, who doesn't want to see Queen Bessie dominating the battlefield? Yeah, this is... Uh, Gonna be a good game. Looks like we have Salamander Hunting Pack back here doing some damage. Oh, Queen Bessie is getting compromised, but is she gonna be able to? Sh yep, there goes another shot while she's getting attacked. Salamander Hunting Pack is no more. <laughs> oh my god, it's so satisfying watching that. But yeah, it looks like Queen Bess may go down here. Vampire Fleet Admiral and the Zombie Pirate Deck Admiral are coming over here desperately to try to help summoning a unit of zombies to help meat shield for them. Um, yeah, you gotta keep Queen Bessie till the end of the map. I'm not gonna check how many kills she has again until the very, very end. Invocation of Heck going down. Upgraded. That should really help heal her back up to full efficiency. And uh, I just don't see anything on this battlefield that the Lizardmen will be able to do. Yeah, so there go army losses. A great game to Park Map, bringing himself back into this series. 1 2. Somebody tell me if you've ever seen Queen Bess be that good in a battle. Love the game. It's a bit like tabletop in real time, and I love the fantasy aspect of Warhammer in contrast to historical Total War games, which I also like. Epic battles uh, with bigger units are cooler than single units in games like StarCraft, but Micro is hard. Yeah, it's a very difficult game. Um, no denying that uh, duo, so just stick with it, bud. But yeah, I'm glad you like it, because it is. It's tabletop in real time, but holy hell. Big Bess is queen. All hell the queen. Bess, best. <laughs> Surprised he brought Bess, though, instead of cannon to pop any large dinosaurs. Well, that's why he had the gunnery whites. Um, the two gunnery whites were, plus the handguns, were all he needed to deal with the carnosaurs. And the vampire fleet cat admiral with the pole arm is also anti-large, so I like that. You know, he really put his anti-large killing power in the heroes and the bullets and that allowed him to not bring a carronade. And the Queen Bess, 218 kills against Lizardmen. I know this is skinks we're talking about, but that is so big. 218 kills. Holy hell. And those, some of those are Salamander hunting pack. Like, Queen Bessie, MVP here. She just devastated the Lizardmen army before they can even close the gap. But most uh, misses half the time, so landing all the shots is definitely putting the battle in his favor. Yeah, exactly. You can dodge the Queen Bess pretty easily, but I do think the Gunnery White's um, accuracy buff in area of effect for units nearby was actually probably helping the Queen Bess quite a lot uh, in terms of the accuracy of shots, because I've never seen the Queen Bess hit that consistently. I think I only saw one shot that completely missed, so I don't know, man. Yeah, if Krokgar was there with, like, Hand of the Gods or something, then it could have easily been countered, but um, it wasn't there, and so the Queen Bess reigned supreme. And it's like a unit as a Lizardman player you don't really expect, I would imagine. 